Hello and welcome my friends, it's Super John Bombo here, and today we're going to do a full review of Kingdom Rush Vengeance. This is the fourth installment in the Kingdom Rush series, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to summarize what you get out of this game, because it is one of the only, well not the only, but one of the main paid tower defense games in uh, the App Store, so is it worth it? Uh, so, starting off, uh, we've got Heroes, Towers... Uh, the the tech not tech tree and kind of like the items you can get as far as heroes go there are three free heroes that you can normally use in the game <clears throat> and then there's six paid heroes on top of that so yeah there's a lot of content that you can unlock by paying it on top of the five dollars you already have then we've got a bunch of towers we can use which is completely different than no the normal way kingdom rush works there is eleven free towers that you can use in the game, and then there's five paid towers that you can use as well. Uh, you don't need any of the paid content, so don't feel like it's necessary, but it is part of the game. Here's the tech tree. It's a pretty standard tech tree. It's a little different than usual Kingdom Rush style, but it's still fine in my eyes. And then as far as items go, this is sort of similar to the way they did it in Iron Marines. You buy some items every once in a while, and you can use them in the game if you want to. It is with in-game currency, not with currency that you buy with real money. So that's at least one good aspect. Here's the map. We've got six uh, six levels in the Dwarven Kingdom, we've got five levels in the Viking Kingdom, and we've got five levels in the sort of castle area over here, the uh, foresty area. And then there's one tutorial level. As far as achievements go, there are some achievements that you can earn throughout the game. None of them are ridiculous. They're all fairly standard achievements, and there's something fun to sort of reach for as you're playing the game. Okay, so let's get down to it, guys. I'm going to break this video down into uh, a couple different parts. I'm going to break it down into gameplay, the graphics, the creativity, the balance, and then the game time, and if it's replayable or not. Then, the last, last but not least, I'm going to talk about some of the issues in the game, which I hope that they can fix with future updates. I'm going to start off by telling you guys right now that you should probably watch the entirety of this video to understand why I'm giving it this rating, but if you just want a really quick review, uh, I'm going to give it an 8.5, guys. It's a great, great game, um, but I feel like it, it wasn't as fun as some of the other Kingdom Rush games. I think this is probably uh, the least fun Kingdom Rush game that has come out, but that doesn't mean it's a bad game. I want to be very, very particular about that. I don't feel like this is a bad game in any sense of the manner. But it's it's not as fun as some of the other ones. So as far as gameplay goes, oh, I love it, man. I always feel like I'm doing something. Whether I'm putting reinforcements down, I'm moving my hero around, I'm using his abilities, or I'm using the soul crusher over here to crush some of these extra guys, always upgrading my towers. I'm always doing something, and that feels like it's a little bit hectic, which is exactly what you want out of a tower defense game. You always want to feel like you're doing something, and you're doing something for the better to help your towers out and hopefully help yourself beat the game. So I found like that part of the game was actually really, really fun. Um, uh, as far as the pace goes, it's a pretty regular pace. I feel like most of the time I'm all, I always know what I'm doing, I always know what's going on. Planning ahead can be, can be helpful and everything. But, uh, at some points in the game, it can be a little slow. Every once in a while, you're just like, wow, I'm waiting for these guys to come out for a really, really long time. Or the waves just aren't coming out right away. Or there's not enough uh, enemies coming out at a certain point in the game. So you just kind of watch and do nothing for a little while. Especially on the easier difficulties. I will say that this is probably the easiest Kingdom Rush game that has come out so far. Maybe they'll fix that with balancing. But at, the, at this point, I like a challenge. I want to have a challenge game. And maybe I'm biased because, well, I've played a lot of Kingdom Rush. So I'm pretty good at Kingdom Rush. But I feel like it was the least challenging game out of all of them, and that's something to keep in mind when playing. As far as graphics, oh my god, absolutely beautiful, guys. Everything looks great. Everything looks phenomenal. Um, the enemies look great, uh, your heroes look great, your towers look great, and then the maps themselves just look absolutely wonderful. And this is not unusual for Kingdom Rush. This is this is, this is exactly what we're expecting out of this game. Uh, and for the next installment, uh, zero complaints about, about how it looks. Everything looks great, and you can actually go into some of the details here and just look at like how everything is kind of coming out together, even looking at the backgrounds over here. Like, I really feel like I'm in a mine right now. I really feel like I'm up above, and like I'm really scared if I fall over, I'm going to fall down and die somewhere, you know? And, like, I feel like I'm a part of the the level here. So that's what I, I love the graphics, guys. I... Uh, no complaints at all there. 10 out of freaking 10 as far as it looks. Creativity. I feel like it was a little lacking. Um... I feel like a lot of the enemies are, are very, very, very standard, especially the Dwarven Kingdom and the Last Kingdom. They're all just sort of the same. 
They're just random enemies with a certain amount of health just sort of walking through. Uh, you know, I, I I feel like in all other Kingdom Rush games, I'm like, oh crap, another one of these guys is coming out. Oh no, another one of these! The Bandersnatch is coming! We gotta do something for it! In this game, everything was just, it walked slow, it moved there, it, it did things, it killed your guys. There was not enough creativity as far as the enemies are concerned. And maybe they will fix that in, in possible updates or in future... Uh, uh, installments of the game, or uh, what do they want to call them, um, in, in extra campaigns or something like that, but as of right now, I feel like they were a little less creative than they could have been. But not entirely not creative. For example, they still have fun challenges like this, uh, this uh, horse, or er, the sheep killing challenge over here. Very, very fun, and uh, even putting the, uh, the super sheep at the end there to make it even more difficult for us. But uh, overall, um, the creativity was not as good as it could have been. Uh, it's still just a very standard-looking Kingdom Rush game, and the enemies just didn't seem as annoying as they should have been. Because I always feel like I'm playing Kingdom Rush, I find annoying enemies, and I'm like, oh crap, I hate dealing with this guy. But that's a good thing! I shouldn't want to have a guy come out against me, because then it's going to be hard for me to kill him. But in this game, I found no guys that were just like, oh, that guy's really annoying, that guy's terrible. None of them were, none of them were that hard to kill. Uh, balance. Uh, this one's okay. Um, it's not as good as previous Kingdom Rush games, and I think it's mostly because there's just so many towers. So I'm not going to go into too much detail right now about the balance, but I'm going to talk about that in the issues section at the end here. Game time. So if you're looking for a game that's going to get you about 15 hours of gameplay, 15 to 20 hours of gameplay, this is your game. Uh, you know, it's five bucks, so uh, I feel like it's a pretty standard amount of of uh, game time for the money that you're spending on this game. Um, but you can, if you want to, go all the way up to about 40 to 50 hours of gameplay if you want to beat everything, unlock everything in the game. So, um, if you wanted to beat the game, uh, beat the campaign, go through and play all the Heroic and Iron challenges, and then go back and beat them all on a harder difficulty, on another round harder and possible, it would take you probably 40 to 50 hours to do all of that. As long as you're actually beating most of the things that you're playing. So, uh, it doesn't really have much replayability. I severely doubt that anybody's going to come back here and just, you know, uh replay the same level three or four or five times or anything like that. It's really not meant to be that type of game. It's meant to just, you beat it and you're done with it kind of game. At least that's the way I think about it. So definitely keep that in mind here. Is it going to be worth five dollars to get you about uh, anywhere between 20 to 50 hours of gameplay? Uh, so that's it for like my main sections that I wanted to go over. Again, I give it about an 8.5 out of 10. It's a very solid game. I like the game. But I feel like that they can still make it better. They can actually make my rating go up by fixing things in the game that can be not easily changed, but changed pretty reasonably well. Uh, number one, the balance is not well done at all. Uh, there's way too many towers that just don't really fluidly work together. Um, I didn't really like that aspect of the game. And not just because it's different. Um, uh, m mostly because I feel like they had to jam it through somehow. Or they just had too much to do. All those towers, you have to create a lot of art for them and make sure they work well and balance them all together in combination with all different tower combos. And it, it just, they didn't do a good enough job. They either didn't spend enough time on the balance, or they just didn't understand the game well enough to make it work well. So I feel like a lot of times I was using a lot of the same towers over and over again to beat the same levels because it was, quote-unquote, the best strategy. And, you know, sure, you can have more fun playing with a variety of different towers, and I would like to do that if it was allowing me to beat all the levels, but it just didn't feel like it was allowed to. Uh, this is probably my biggest complaint about the game, is that uh, the towers don't have two fourth-tier upgrades is a really big issue for me. I don't like this, and I hope that they don't continue to do this. I hope that they change this around in the next installment of Kingdom Rush. I don't mind having all of these towers. If you have all these towers, at least allow two different fourth-tier upgrades. This is really important, guys. At least to me, this is what made the game seem less fun. Okay? So the way it works is in all previous Kingdom Rush games, you had two different upgrades that you can go for in uh, the fourth tier. You could buy first, second, and third tier, and you just get a more powerful tower. But for fourth tier, it changed the tower completely. It either became, uh, it became one of two different things, but it changed the way that it worked. For example, an artillery tower in uh, uh, Kingdom Rush Origins, uh, if you ride up to third tier, you just keep throwing rocks, but if for fourth tier, you turn into a giant tree that throws big tree nuts all over the place, and then you can also do like grouped attacks all the way around him and a bunch of variety of different uh, ways to kill things. Or you can go for an Arc Druid Hedge, which basically throws, uh, you know, three times the rocks in a fun and interesting way, or has a couple different upgrades that can affect magic and stuff like that. So, in this game, the towers all feel so monotonous. They're always the same thing. And to me, that that, that was a negative. Um, you don't have to think ahead. 
you don't have to strategize, you just build the tower and as it gets stronger it does more stuff. So I felt like that was a real big disappointment for me and uh, it actually took away from the gameplay quite a bit for me. Uh, and then the last two things, guys, are the, uh, there's no icons to show you the different difficulties or what you've beaten so far. You can beat the entire game on casual and get the same things on your screen that I got on my screen for beating on impossible. I feel like that shouldn't be, ex be in existence. You should have some sort of bronze, silver, gold, and diamond things that pop up on the actual map itself that shows you what you can beat. And it really gives you no real reason to go back and beat these things on harder difficulties. It's just like, you beat it and you're done. And that really hurt the replayability of the game. You know, not going back and replaying these games and trying to fully beat everything on, on the hardest difficulty. Nobody's going to want to do that. You know, if they do, they're going to be real hardcore players like myself. And then another one was the no, there's no reason for heroic and iron challenges basically at all in this game. In previous Kingdom Rush games, the way it worked is you got, uh, uh, basically per star you got, you got a, uh, an upgrade point that you could use at any point in the game. And uh, what you would do is you get three stars for beating the game on regular, and then you do a Heroic and Iron Challenge each for one star, so you get five points per level. In this game, they don't give you any points for beating Heroic and Iron Challenges, so there's really no point in playing them until you beat the game. Zero point. And then by that point, it makes it so it's it's too easy, because you go back and you've got a level 10 hero, you've got all these upgrade points and all this other stuff, and all the Heroic and Iron Challenges are just a breeze, even on the most difficult of levels, or most difficult of... Um, yeah, on, mo on all the easy levels for sure, they're just super duper easy. And even as you get up higher and higher and higher, they're still pretty easy having all those achievement points um, unlocked. So, uh, my three main complaints with the game are the, the lack of fourth tier tower splits, the lack of icons for beating the different, di different, different, different difficulties, and there's really no reason to beat the Heroic and Iron Challenges after you beat the campaign. Um, I really hope that they, they fix that in the future, or uh, you know, at the very least try to make that a little bit better in future games. Um, those are my definite biggest complaints about the game, but that does not make it a bad game, guys. I still love this game. I had a blast playing, and I think that's the number one thing you need to understand about this, is that I did complain a little bit, uh, and it's... But it's still a great game. I, I still think that I, most people that are going to play this thing, they're going to have zero complaints about it. They're still going to have a blast playing it. But I hope that I'm making this video that maybe Iron Hot will see this and maybe they'll think to themselves, oh, maybe we'll make the game better next time. And, of course, make everybody even happier than what they currently are. Because that's what I want to see. I want to better the game. I want to better everything. But anyways, that's all I'm for you guys today. So if you enjoyed, make sure you press the like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't. And, of course, have a super duper delicious day.